Hello everyone, Sam Olson, Firefighter EMT here at the City of Dallas Fire and EMS. Today we're going to be going over donning PPE and the appropriate way to do so within a timely manner. First step you're going to want to do is remove your boots once arrival to the station or to your apparatus. Second, find your hood, place your hood on over your head, covering your ears. Second step, feet into the boots and pulling up your bunker bottoms and moving the suspenders up. Then you're going to zip your turnout bottoms and use the button to click and also ensuring that your waist belt is secured and cinched. Jacket is going to come over. You're going to find your zipper. Zipping the jacket all the way up, ensuring that the collar flap is velcroed. Roll down your hood into a secure position. You're going to find your helmet. Helmet on. Last step is your gloves. This evolution should take you 60 seconds or less to complete. A goal should be under 45 to ensure the fastest response possible. Thank you all for watching and have a great day. Today we're going to be going over your personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. We're going to be inspecting our equipment to make sure that we're ready for response. First we're going to go over our fire helmet. Some of ours may look different than the one I have here. but they all serve the same purpose, protecting your head. A couple things that you're gonna wanna check when inspecting your helmet is making sure your helmet is clean. By doing that, you can use Dawn dish soap, warm running water, and a hard scrub brush to get rid of any debris or black soot that you may have built up on your helmet. The next thing that you're gonna do is check the inside. The webbing on the inside, make sure it securely fits to your head. One thing that you want to make sure is that there's no threads or thermal damage to any of the internal components of this helmet. The other thing you want to do is if you have eye protection on your helmet to make sure that it is clear and working properly. This ensures that you have a secondary set of eyewear, not including your face piece or the safety glasses that you might wear underneath. The last thing is your chin strap. Chin strap should have no fraying or damage to the mechanical components. The last thing that you want to check is to make sure it clips and stays in place. And that's our helmet. Next piece of equipment we're going to go over is our MSA G1 face mask. You guys should all be fit tested by now and if you haven't please get a hold of Jesse Friedow and he'll be able to facilitate any testing that you may need done. A couple things in regards to the mask. First, we want to look at the exterior face piece of the mask. We're going to be looking for any crazing or any serious burn marks to the exterior of the mask. This is going to show that it's uh, been damaged due to significant heat and that's an issue that needs to be dealt with immediately. Please turn it into anyone during the daytime hours and we can help facilitate getting you a new mask and getting your current one tested. Other things we want to look for is we're looking at the netting of the back and we're also looking at the straps. When doing that we're going to make sure there's no hanging threads that's all um, solid and no tears or rips in any of that. The other thing you'll want to do is flip your netting up to cover the face shield so you can get a good inside look of your mask. Rubber should be intact, no cracking or deterioration of any sort and look inside of your face piece. You should see that your exhalation valve is working correctly and that all components are inside of the mask. There's one other important factor that you want to look at is when you flip down your nose piece you'll want to see a flap inside. It may be hard to see it right now but if you need help finding this flap please let one of us know down here during daytime hours and we can definitely help you out. Making sure that's there and also your exhalation valves on the side. There's one on each side. Making sure that those are in true working order and that the flaps are there will ensure that your mask is fitting properly and working correctly. Traffic vests. 
They keep you safe. Very important piece of equipment that we have here at Dallas Fire and EMS. Hopefully on all traffic incidents, medical calls involving roadways, you have one of these on. Things that are important about your safety vest. Ensuring that it is clean and still able to see the reflective yellow and reflective gray patches on here. Important for nighttime calls. Make sure that you also wash your safety vest if it is dirty or smelly. Using the extractor here at the station will ensure that it gets super fresh and clean. Your hood, integral piece of safety equipment here at Dallas Fire and EMS. Something that you should hopefully have on you at all times. Here at Dallas Fire and EMS, one way to make sure that your hood is smelling fresh and clean is to give her a whiff. Yep, smells clean. If it smells like smoke or sweat, maybe a good time to wash it. Something also important to look at is any discoloration of the hood, looking for any light brown spots that may show that you have thermal damage to your hood. Also looking for any cuts, tears, or openings may allow thermal damage to your back, to your neck, and to your ears. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. You may notice my turnout jacket looking clean fresh and ready for service because it is a super important part of your safety equipment is your turnout jacket some things to look at when inspecting your turnout jacket that is ready for service is that your reflective markings are all clean your turnout jacket is clean of any mud debris soot and it doesn't smell like smoke if you have any of those things please take it to the extractor here at the main station and get it washed right away a couple other things to look at is any tears, rips, or any open spots on your jacket. This, is, this ensures safety for you and all the other people on the engine responding. Another thing you might want to check is your flashlight. This will help you see in dark circumstances. Hey there everyone. You may notice I'm wearing my bunker gear in a very cool fashion. You're right, they are cool. But they're even cooler when they're clean. Some things you might know about your bunker bottoms is that they really take a beating. Some important things to look for are burn marks, debris on your pants, any tears or cuts in your turnout bottoms. If you have any of those issues, please, co please come and see us. Just like your turnout jacket, a dirty coat and dirty pants make for a dirty job. Hello everyone, welcome back again. Now we're going to touch on some PPE to help prevent you from the COVID-19. Some things that we want to see all responders wearing on medical calls if needed by the EMS crew. Your mask, an N95. Proper placement of your mask on your face starts with the bottom strap. The mask comes to your chin the bottom strap goes to the bottom of your head and the top strap comes over. The nose piece should fit firmly on the top bridge of your nose and it should co cover the bottom of your chin. The next piece of equipment you should be wearing is your mask cover. These were donated to us by some local citizen members and they're great pieces of equipment to help us stay safe. You can wear yours in any fashion. This is how I like to wear mine, covering the mask fully and I have a custom strap for the back. The last piece of protective equipment you'll want to wear is your eye pro. These goggles help eliminate any splash, cough, blood, puke, sputum in my eyes. 